what's going on youtube welcome back to another video today we're going to be talking about the texas longhorns and their 2025 recruiting class now texas on field results are obviously there they're in the thick of it for the college football playoff and they're one of the title favorites but they're also doing a great job on the recruiting trail as steve sarkeesian head coach has them number three overall in the recruiting rankings and they're not quite done yet they still have some major targets out there on the board but to this point they've done a great job of acquiring top talent and keeping guys home in the state of texas so to start things off leader of the class to this point is jonah williams now yes he's ranked the number one safety but i don't think people realize how good of a football player this kid is this is a guy who can play linebacker safety rush the passer i mean he can do just about anything you want out of a defensive player he can also go play the offensive side of the ball and do a great job there as well so with Jonah, you have everything you want in a safety, and he deserves every bit of that five-star. I might even have him higher than the ninth player in the class, but ninth isn't too shabby, to say the least. Kalik Lockett, another kid from Texas, five-star wide receiver, the fourth receiver in the class, according to the composite. Once again, you have Arch Manning at quarterback for the next several years, and we'll get to the quarterback that they have in this class also. What do you need? You need wide receivers, right? You miss on DeCorey and Moore, but you get Kalik Lockett and Jamie French, who we're also going to talk about later on in the video. But two five-star receivers, and you went to Florida. You got French from Mandarin, Florida High School, and he's a five-star as well. Lance Jackson, one of the better edge rushers in the class and one of the best players in the state of Texas, Texarkana, Texas. Brother of Landon Jackson, we'll get to that later on in the video as well. But once again, Sark is doing a great job of acquiring talent on the line of scrimmage. And that shows up in big games, right? We saw what Georgia did to Texas. And Texas defense has been playing great this year. I don't think that that game should not like be put on Texas's defense. Their defense played great against Georgia. And they played great all year, especially the front four. You think of a guy like Colin Simmons, right? They got him last year's class. He was a five-star. He was the number one player at one point. He dropped in the rankings just about to this point. 30th, 32nd player, number four edge. But we see the kind of impact that he has as a freshman. Now, at the time, I didn't agree with their uh, rankings of Colin Simmons. I thought moving him from, at one point, a top three, top five player all the way down to like 30. The way I see it is, if a kid is at one point the number one player in the class, in no world is he dropping to 30th when he still had a good senior season, right? And I think we kind of see that on the field this year. Like, he is a dude, and so is Lance Jackson. Elijah Barnes, there's some people out there that think he's a top three linebacker, top two linebacker in the class. Nonetheless, you kept him in, in state, kept a hometown kid here, and got a very solid linebacker. At corner, just a couple days ago, you got Grayson Littleton. Once again, you go into Florida. So, so far, all Florida, Texas. And as you can see, you got Texas, Texas, Texas. In Florida, got Charles down there from Florida. And that's a lot of guys just from two states, right? Two two states that have a lot of talent. And I think Sark realizes that. And he's done a great job building this class. Talk about that D-line, edge group, Smith Rogbo, Myron Charles. Two four-star prospects. One inside the top 100, one on the very edge of the top 100. But then you finally go to a new state, Alabama. You get K.J. Lacey. One of the better quarterbacks in the class from Sarah Land, Alabama. And here's the history of his ranking. So, I mean, at one point, this kid was the 50th recruit. He was up there with the best, and he's just had a slight drop over the last several weeks. They do have some low three stars, but that's going to happen. I mean, you got players, you got a lot of four stars 221, 380, 188, 180, 176. A lot of really good players. Josiah Sharma, this is the guy from California. Not often do you find 6'4 and a half, 325 on the West Coast. That was a big time get for them. They flipped him from Oregon, which is huge. And Texas was the presumed favorite on, on his commit day. So ultimately they got him. And that's a big time get. I mean, we're talking D-line from California. And he's about the only guy out there in this class that is at that size. So yeah, that's their class right now. Obviously, you can see why it's number three. A lot of top end talent. A lot of top 100 guys, but also they have to they have to keep these guys on board, right? 
You have to keep these guys in the boat. Right now, Jamie French, he's probably the biggest threat to flip. But that threat, it's not as big as you think. Um, He's taking a visit to Florida, and he actually talked pretty highly of Florida, talking about the possibility of playing with DJ Legway. So maybe that is a small concern. Ohio State, obviously, they're staying in communication with him as well. But I really think this is going to come down to Texas, just holding off Florida. I mean, they said Billy Napier's going to come back next year, and I think that's a big deal to French. As he's he's from Florida, he's from Jacksonville. He made the trip with multiple high-ranked recruits over the weekend, and they all loved it. Talked to G DJ Legway, and Legway he put a good word in for Florida to those guys. So definitely something to keep an eye on. And then the other guy is Lance Jackson. This one's pretty self-explanatory. He's the younger brother of Landon Jackson from Arkansas. Landon Jackson is probably their best player. He's also an edge rusher, so there's a family tie there. But also, he is from Texas. They have that going for him. Definitely something to keep an eye on. He has a prediction to Arkansas. I do not know when this was put in. Yeah, so this is over from over a year ago. So that really has nothing to do with right now. But yeah, keep an eye on Jackson. And now I have three guys. We have Michael Terry, Justice Terry, and Nathaniel Wusu Botang. So these are guys to keep an eye on that I think Texas is very much in it for. Michael Terry, this is really coming down. Texas, Nebraska. You can see Oregon a and on there. They have kind of faded out in this recruitment. This is all Texas, all Nebraska. And you have to love where Texas stands. They're the hometown team. The sell for him is come play, come play offense, come play running back, tight end, receiver. We're going to put you everywhere. And he really likes that. At one point, he was a top 15 recruit. He has, he's had just a slight dip. But I think part of that is you don't know where he's going to play, right? He's the number one athlete still because of the versatility, but also that's hurting his ranking, I think, just because he doesn't have a position set in, set in stone right now. You don't know what he's projected to be. Therefore, you can't really project him to be, you know, a first-round pick down the road. You just don't know how things are going to pan out. Nonetheless, I mean, I'd probably still put him in the top 20 if I had to make my own rankings. Justice Terry, I mean, this is a dude right here. This is one of the better players in the class. I mean, this is... What you need on the D-line, 6'5", 275 from Georgia. Now, Texas, yes, they're in this recruitment, but this is as hard as it gets to get a player, right? You have to go into Georgia and get a five-star D-lineman from Kirby Smart. Now, it's been done before, very few times. I mean, just last year, Edric Houston from Buford, right? He went to Ohio State. I mean, they definitely have that going for him. But overall, in this recruitment, it's really been Terry. What does he like most, right? Does he value relationships, on-field results, or playing time, right? Between playing time and relationships. But the on-field results, he's talked about only when he takes visits. I think that's a big thing for Georgia. He's been on Georgia's campus for their big home games. So that is a problem. That is some concern for Texas. I mean, this is the biggest fish out there for the Longhorns, and if they pull this off, I mean, this is going to be one of the biggest wins for Sark on the recruiting trail. Now, for Wusu Botang, they get a visit this week, which is huge, because Michigan's easily the front runner in this right now. If you had to pick a favorite, it would definitely be the the Wolverines. Yeah, Texas. All you need is one visit, right? One visit, knocking out the park. You do that, and you're right in it. The signing day, about a couple weeks away. You just need a hat on the table, right? Hat on the table, and from there, anything can happen. Now, the chances of Texas landing all three of these guys is very slim. It's very slim, obviously, because of Terry. Justice Terry, that is. But I, th I think Michael Terry is very possible. I think they're the likely favorite to get him. Botang, depending on this visit, they could be the favorite coming out. They could be the favorite heading into signing day. So signing two of the three is very possible. And even at that, we're talking about potential number one class if you keep Jackson and French on board as well. So yeah, there's a lot going for the Longhorns. And Texas fans, just let me know down below what you think about your recruiting class. Who's your favorite recruit? Who's your favorite guy committed to your team? And what do you think about your chances with Michael Terry, Justice Terry, and Botang? Be sure to comment that down below. And before you head out, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll catch you on the next video.